This section of the course is for those of you that want to add the element of video to your podcast for uploading to YouTube, Vimeo, TikTok, Instagram Reels, whatever you want to use it for. If you don't want to use video in your podcast, you can still listen to this and learn from it, or you can just skip to the next one. If you want that video element, it can be so overwhelming, just like with microphones on what to purchase, where to even start looking. And so I'm gonna run you through that now, but I'm gonna save you the trouble of going through all, the, like we went through all the different microphones for that section. I'm not gonna run through all the cameras because there's just as much, if not way more camera options. And most of them do about the same thing within their price ranges. There's tons of options within certain price ranges and most of them do the exact same thing. And so, I would say to you, if your budget for purchasing a camera to add video is less than $300, $350, use the smartphone that you probably already possess for that video. Don't go out and buy a $250, $300 camera if you just want to point it and film video for your podcast and get 1080p video. Your I'm not sure about other things, but I'm pretty sure most smartphones, I do know for a fact that iPhones film 4K resolution, which is 4,000 pixels, and it's more than you need for your podcast. And so I would say the only reason that's necessary for you to buy another camera is if you want multiple camera angles or you want something that has a little more depth of field. Like if you, if you look back at the guitars, you can see they're a little more out of focus. You start to get that when you get more upgraded cameras past that $300 range and the 300 to 500 and up, you start to get those cameras that can really have the background out of focus and, and it can look cool, but it's absolutely not necessary. So I would say, again, if your budget is less than $300 for a camera, save that money, use it on something else and just use the smartphone that you have because it gets great footage. You can set that up on a camera stand if you want. You can set it up on a pile of books and just film. It's gonna get great footage. You can film your podcast with your iPhone or your smartphone, have your separate audio that you record into, and then just combine those in your editing software. And I'll show you that later in the course, how to do that. But don't feel like you have to buy this nice camera that's gonna cost you a ton of money that can do a very similar thing to your smartphone. Now, let's say you do want multiple camera angles or you do just want that professional grade camera look that is a little past what the smartphones can do. And usually the difference between that is um, like getting the focus, getting the background like out of focus, which a lot of, you know, like the latest iPhones can do now with video anyway. So keep that in mind. Don't feel like you gotta buy an expensive camera if you wanna add video to your podcast. That being said, I'll show you right now. If I was you, I would just go to bhphotovideo.com come down here to photography, click right here on digital cameras. And then these are showing the most popular ones, which $3,800. We're gonna go right here and go to price low to high. And then here's what I would do. I would come all the way down here to video resolution, click see all, do HD 1080. Cause that's all that really matters is that your camera shoots 1080p at least. That's what YouTube, Vimeo, all these things do. You get these cameras that are thousands of dollars and they have 4K and 8K, and then people end up shooting that high resolution, which makes huge files. They're gigabytes in size just for short clips. And then you end up editing that to 1080p and then watching it on a little phone. So it's kind of a joke in the video industry of people that that buy these massively expensive cameras that shoot 8K resolution, and then you end up watching it on a phone at 1080p. There's obviously reasons for doing that. Um, when you really dive deep into editing, you can see how doing 8K, you can really zoom in on an image and crop it down. So it does have those capabilities and it's necessary at times, but not for what you're doing in a podcast. And so, make sure you've got that video resolution filter at 1080. And then if we just clicked on like Canon and then see all Sony, you can do that with Nikon as well, like Fujifilm, Nikon, Canon, Sony, they're all great companies and they make fantastic um, gear. Canon and Sony are the two I'm most familiar with that I've used a lot of theirs. So like I said, 
if you are under this right here, 379-ish for your budget, I would stick with your smartphone. If you want that camera, that out of focus look, or for whatever reason you want the lens that has the zoom lens on it and you're not losing any quality, then a digital camera might be the way to go. So you look at this Canon EOS Rebel T100 is 379. It comes with a lens. Um, the thing about this though, is it doesn't have um, like a fold out um, monitor. So these are great cameras. They come with a lens. That is one better option of having like a DSLR camera, like a Canon, is that they come with the camera body separate from the lens. So you do have to buy a lens separately, but you have like these combo packs that come with a 18 to 55 millimeter lens. If you don't know what that means, it's just a zoom lens. 18 millimeter is very wide. You can see a lot of the room and the space and then you zoom into 55 and it will crop in really tight on the person where this is kind of all you can see depending on your distance away from them. But I would say unless you're able to get like these types of cameras, I wouldn't even worry about buying a digital camera. I do have friends that I know that use this one, the Sony a 600 mirrorless camera. Um, this one comes with a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. We don't, it's not important that we know all the specs to these cameras either. If we're just setting it up for our podcast and filming, then that's all we need to know that it shoots 1080p. It's a great camera. It's solid. It's going to last a long time. Um, I would say as far as durability, Canon beats almost anybody in that place as far as like weatherproof and dropping it and just very solid, which might not be necessary if you're just filming indoors for a podcast. So you look at like this right here, the Sony a 6,000 comes with a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. It comes with an SD card, a bag, um, space battery. Like it, it comes with accessories at 749. Now, if you don't have the budget, you don't need to worry about that. We will say it again. And I'll probably say it more in this course. Never let budget stop you from doing your podcast and adding features to it. If you don't have this budget, don't stress, just put your, smartphone on a stand film it it'll look great people watch youtube today um and the quality is so bad and i will watch it as a videographer and i'm surprised at these videos that have so many views and people just love to consume content if it's entertaining and it's interesting to them it's something that they care about they're gonna watch it and so it is great to have that high quality i think it's most important on a podcast to have high quality audio um, and the video can just be an additional element that you put on top of that. But as long as it films 1080p, that's great. And like I mentioned before, your iPhone films higher quality video than a lot of these cameras that are $400, $500. These Canon cameras that are like 350 and 400, they shoot 1080p max. They don't shoot 4K. Your, your iPhone shoots 4K. And so I think it would be most important to spend your money on quality audio gear and good recording gear, and maybe you wanna buy some editing software or whatever, that's where your money can be well spent that you're gonna use for a really long time. I thought of one last piece of equipment to show you if you are doing video, and yes, this is a third totally different day, that's why I have a different shirt on, <laughs> but I keep thinking of things that I do wanna show you just so you are aware of them, and that is a video switcher board, and this is for switching between cameras while you're filming so you don't have to edit that later on if you have something like uh, two or three or four cameras um, when you get to editing you do have to cut between those to do to show you and then a guest and another guest you have to on your own manually cut you know and i'll show you how to do that and it's actually real easy but it does mean you got to go through your podcast episode all the way through and kind of cut it up and switch between those camera angles. If you have something like a switcher, you can do that all during the podcast episode. So I'll have my camera set on number one, the guest camera on number two, if I have a third camera. And so during the podcast episode, I can just, when it's on me, I can hit number one and it's on me, number two. It does help to have someone else run this for you, but I ran it myself multiple times and you have a little monitor and you just, it'll show you which one you're on. And so that's nice because then it just exports its own file um, with the cameras already switched and you don't have to switch that um, in post-production. 
So that does mean that if you make a mistake and I hit one and it's on me when my guest is talking, that it's gonna export that file as is and it's gonna be on me while my guest is talking. So you do, it is something that you do have to consciously be thinking about during your podcast episode. And it's always nice if you can have someone else to run it for you. But if you don't have that option, like I didn't have that option for a long time, um, just I just switch them myself. So this one in particular that is very popular is made by Black Magic. Um, and it is the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. I'm gonna show you right here on BH Photo. Um, if you just type in uh, the ATEM Mini, I don't know if they say Atom or Atom, um, but you can see these different options. So this number one bestseller is the one I have. So a lot of people use these for live streaming as well, which is really cool. So you can have a couple cameras set up to you. You can be plugged into your computer, like you can be plugged into this device, into your computer, and you can be live streaming on Facebook or YouTube, and you can switch between the cameras, and it's just doing that all live. So that's why a lot of people use these as well. So that's why you see that it's HDMI live stream switcher. And so there is this cheaper one that's 295. Um, I think the difference with that is it this one is it doesn't give you separate video files like there is a way with this um, Mini Pro and these other ones that are more expensive, you know, the Mini Pro ISO um, uh, This is actually the one I think I have the Mini Pro ISO um, This one might be a little different, but there are little differences between them, you know that you obviously got to read about um, I know with the ISO, there is a way to connect this to the actual like ATEM program software that you get for free. And you, there is a way to connect it to your computer and have separate files. So even if you make a mistake, you can go back and fix that. I know the cheaper, the cheaper ones are just as is. So whatever you hit the buttons, it's going to export the video as, as that. And so you just got to make sure you're on top of it during your episode. But I wanted to make sure I showed you these because they are a really cool device. And if you don't use something like a switcher and you're doing multiple cameras, um, that is something that in post-production you do have to manually edit between cameras. A lot of people are using these also, just like they're using the PodTrack P4 with the sound pad and the programmed, you know, pre-programmed sounds is it eliminates a lot of post-production editing. So you have buttons on these for like a lower thirds logo, like someone's name. So you can program that in here and just push the button and that little title is gonna pop into your video. So they have all these cool like pre-settings um, that I really love this. I also like just doing it separately on my own, it's coming from the video editing back background. Like I kind of like having more manual control and just putting those titles in myself. So this is really up to you, but I really wanted to make sure that you saw um, a switcher and knew that it even existed. And again, if it's not in your budget, it's not even necessary. I have this and I still do podcast episodes and video production uh, projects where I don't even use. I did want to show you this. If you do decide to go to the video route and you're looking at tripods, don't let someone tell you for your podcast, you need a tripod that's $300 fifty dollars four hundred dollars it's absolutely not necessary i've been doing video for over 10 years professionally and one thing i've learned is you can't listen to the crowds when they tell you you have to buy this piece of equipment you have to buy this and this you just you don't have to do any of that you just want to get the highest quality for the best possible price and there's so many options when it comes to that if i was you and you had to you were getting a camera or something and you had to get a tripod for it go to bhphotovideo.com sort it by low to high. The, here's a tripod right here for $20 that you could put a camera on and it would work great. Um, one tripod that I did want to show you, and it's not like a tall tripod, but I've literally used this. It's, the, it's this one right here, the Joby Gorilla Pod um, flexible mini tripod. And it is short, obviously. You can see it right here on my desk. But the cool thing about this is it is, has multiple joints and it can fix any you know, you can fix it to any point. You can wrap it around something. You can get it as flat as you want. It's got this head on top that um, you can screw and move this all around. Um, this is a great option if you are doing just iPhone recording for your podcast because I this is like a cheap, cheap little iPhone um, holder that you just stick your phone right on it. I'll just show you while we're at it. Why not? Um, you just pull it like that set that right there hit record on my microphone it's filming me i'm talking to it <laughs> like that's all you need to do it's not necessary 
it's really not necessary to go crazy with these cameras and these tripods, especially when you're just getting your podcast up and off the ground. You can't believe everybody that says you got to have this piece of equipment, you've got to spend this much so it looks professional and sounds professional. That is not necessary. I've used equipment now in my video professional career for that I've had for so long and people would be surprised at the things that I still use. I still use a camera where people are using cameras that are like five and six grand. I'll still do video shoots with one that's like $700 that I've had for years because I like certain functionality that I need for certain shoots. And so never let somebody tell you that to run your podcast, you have to have this type of microphone and this camera and all of this. Just start with your budget where it's at. We've already shown how you can literally have your iPhone and a cheap set of headphones plugged into that iPhone and getting great sound. And so if that's where you need to start, that's great. And there's nothing to be ashamed of for that. It's gonna sound great and someone who's just listening to it is not gonna know the difference. You look at some of the things that people watch on YouTube that have terrible quality audio, terrible video, and people, people love it. So if people are interested in your topic, that's what's gonna drive it. But then good sound for sure can increase the quality of it and will probably keep people listening if it's pleasant to listen to. So the bottom line with cameras, there's an endless amount of possibilities. I would start with wherever your budget is. If it's less than $350, $400, I would say even if your budget is less than $500, I would stick with your smartphone. If you have $500 to $1,000, then start looking into some of these digital cameras and see if it's necessary for you.